Right, before I get into showing you how we're going to resize an image in GIMP, I thought I'd first look at why you'd want to resize, especially as most of us work on the web. We want to be able to place the pictures that we resize onto a web page somewhere. And here's a spare blog I've got, and I'm pretending for the moment that I want to put a picture in under this bit of text here. And I don't know what size to make the picture. I've got my picture that I've taken with my camera, but I, I want to make sure I resize it exactly the right width. So to do that, because I use Google Chrome as my browser, I'm easily able to have these little widgets up here, and one of them is something that will measure areas on a screen. Now, in case you're not using Google Chrome or you don't know how to do it, I suggest that you do download Google Chrome because it's a great browser. Simply search for Google Chrome extensions in Google and when you find this website type in measure it there and do a search and click on measure it when you find it and then click the install button. In Chrome it's really easy, you just click that button, wait about three seconds and the whole thing's installed that will give you this icon here. You can also do that in Firefox but I'm, I'm suggesting you do it in Chrome, it's, it's just a better browser in my opinion. Okay, going back to our website we've now got our measure it icon. We simply click it and measure the width of the available area where we want our picture to go. Now I'm not bothering with how high it is, I'm only looking at how wide it is and I'm seeing that if I had a picture that was 484 pixels in width then it would fit there really well. So bearing that in mind all we have to remember is 484. Okay so having decided that we'd like our image to be 484 pixels wide we can start with the image that comes straight out of say a camera which is usually a lot larger than that and set about scaling it. To do that, we click on Image and then Scale Image. That brings up a box like this. And the image is currently 1280 pixels wide by 960 high. Making sure that this link image here is intact and not broken, I'll just click it to show you what it looks like when it's broken. If it's not intact and it remains broken, then if I change the width of the image here, the height will remain at 960. If I want the height to change in proportion to the width, I have to make sure that link image here is actually intact. So we know what we want this to be 484, and then we simply click into the height box and it calculates the right size for the height. Then all we have to do is click on the scale button. And that's it in terms of scaling the image. Now we need to save the image suitable for the web. If I say file and then save as, the reason I'm picking save as is because I don't want to save the new image over my old image. I want to give it a new name. So I might give it a name like Rocco and Roma Web just to pick a different name and then I'll click the Save button. That brings up a box that enables me to make a decision about how big I want that file to be, or rather how heavy it should be. If this is destined for a web page, we want the web page to be as light as possible, as lightweight as possible. Currently, we don't know the size of this file. I'm not talking about the pixel dimensions, I'm talking about the file size in bytes. But if we press on there and click that box to show preview in image window, it also shows us the file size as is, which is 72.1K, which is quite large for a picture that's only 484 pixels wide. So what I'm going to do is move this down until it reaches a size that I think is more commensurate with an image of that pixel dimension and suitable for my web page. Okay, I've moved it all the way down to 28k, which is quite a lot smaller than it would have been at 70 odd k, and that means it will load in my web page faster. 
It's very important to do that. Scaling an image alone is one thing, but not affecting its quality and therefore its ultimate file size is another. Once I've done that, I can click Save. And then we have the smaller image suitably resized for the web. I'm now going to upload my new image that I've saved to my blog to demonstrate how I get it in there and to show you that it is now exactly the right size for that particular web page. There are a couple of ways of doing this. Some people like to use the uploads directory in WordPress and upload all their images to WordPress itself and add their images that way. I don't do that. There's lots of reasons why, but that's another subject for another video. Just suffice to say that I prefer to keep all my images in Amazon S3. Now you can choose to use Amazon S3 or some other image hosting service. But I'm using Amazon S3, so I'm just going to take the new image that I've just made and resized and copy it over to my Amazon S3 account. Once that's happened, I just set the protection on that file, so everyone can see it in this case, get the URL and then minimize that and I'm now going to arrange for this picture to appear here so I just go into the edit for this particular WordPress post and I'm going to add the image here by putting in an image tag and then pressing on OK and a description and that puts the image into my post if I do an update and then a view post. The resized image is now perfectly sized for my post. Okay, that's it. Bye.